Hello and welcome back to another full step-by-step -step PC build guide and today I'm going to be attempting to build the quietest PC I've ever built on the channel. And I do really think I've got the right hardware for doing this, starting off with the case which is Be Quiet's brand new flagship, it's their Darkbase Pro 901. Take a look at the other parts I'm going to be building with today. For the motherboard I'm going to be using the ASUS ROG Strix Z790 e Gaming Wi-Fi. For the CPU I'm going to be using Intel's 13th Gen i7, it's the 13700K. And I'm going to be testing out a gelid CPU protector frame. Keeping our CPU cool I'm going to be using BeQuat's Dark Rock Pro 4. For RAM I've got 32GB of Case and Fury Beast DDR5 at 5200 mega transfers per second. For storage I'm going with a single Gen 4 NVMe drive from Lexar. It's their NM790 in 2TB capacity. Powering the whole build I've got a 1200W fully modular platinum power supply from BeQuiet. It's the Dark Power Pro 12. And for the graphics card I'm going to be using the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 4080. So if you did want to do a build in this case but would much prefer an I.O., don't worry I'm going to cover all that in the thermal testing video. The focus of today's build is the lowest noise possible and you cannot beat the Dark Rock Pro 4 for that. In the thermal testing video I will compare the temperatures and the noise levels with the I.O. so you're going to be able to make your own mind up. Okay, let's dive in and take a closer look at the case. So as usual I'm going to make a start by preparing the case and as I go I'm going to point out all the case's features. So to remove our tempered glass side panel, we've got two captive thumb screws at the back which we need to loosen. Once these have been loosened, we can pull the side panel backwards, tilt it out and lift away. Our other side panel is removed in exactly the same way. There's two captive thumb screws at the back which we need to loosen. And once these have been loosened, the panel can be pulled backwards, tilted out and lifted away. Take a look at the back of the panel we've just removed. You'll also get lots of noise dampening material here. And we've got this perforated mesh area indicating that we're going to be able to side mount fans and radiators on the case. Take a look at our front I.O. We've got a separate headphone and microphone jack. We've got four USB Type-A ports, a single Type-C port and a power button. We've also got some buttons to control the case's built-in fan and ARGB controller. And I'll show you these in more details once the build is done. So we've got an ARGB lighting strip along the front panel. And the ARGB strip continues the full length of the side of the case. So we take a look at our front panel. You'll notice that it is solid and you might be worried about the airflow. But if we take a look in from the side, you can see there's an absolutely massive perforated area here and again on the other side of the front panel, which should let plenty of airflow in. So this solid front panel is obviously designed to give you the lowest noise option. If you want the best airflow option, there is a mesh panel in the case accessory box and I'll show you how to change that out in a minute. So just before we do, I want to show you one of this case's other really cool features. The bottom of the front panel is actually a little door which folds down. There's a little notch on each side to get your nail into and then you're going to be able to pull this down. And we've got a slot here, there's a little dust filter on it at the moment, but you can actually mount a five and a quarter inch drive here. So to change this for the mesh panel, we're going to need to remove the whole of the front panel, and we can do this by simply pulling it off from the bottom. So take a look at the back of our front panel, you can see we've got more noise dampening material here on this solid panel, and we've got some electrical contacts for the built-in ARGB light strip. So you can see our front panel is secured with six little plastic pegs here, and to remove it, it's just a matter of pushing these out. So all we're going to want to do is push these together and then push them out. Okay, so that's them all freed. It should then just be a matter of pushing the panel out. Then we can line our mesh panel up. And once we're happy we've got it lined up, it's just some firm pressure to each of these pins and it'll clip into place. And this is what the case looks like with the mesh panel at the front. Now as I'm going for a noise focused build, I'm going to be sticking with the solid front panel. So with our front panel removed, you can see we've got a dust filter here at the front. There's little pins here we just need to push in together. And then we're going to be able to pull the dust filter off. And we've got a magnetically attached mesh filter over a five and a quarter inch drive slot. On the front of the case we've got this removable fan stroke radiator bracket and on this you're going to be able to mount up to three 140 or three 120 millimeter fans or up to a 420 millimeter radiator. And you can see we've got two Silent Wings 4 PWM fans pre-installed. To remove the fan bracket we've got four thumb screws we need to loosen. And then with the thumb screws all loosened we should simply be able to lift the bracket away. And you might be surprised how come the fan bracket has simply pulled off. And that is because our fan bracket has a built-in PWM fan hub. You can see our two 140mm Silent Wing 4 fans are plugged into these two headers here. 
and we've got one spare header here if you wanted to add an additional fan to the bracket. So you plug your fans into the hub here and we've got these gold connectors. Whenever the bracket is slotted into the case, they make contact and that's what powers your fans. So absolutely brilliant. So we take a closer look at our two front fans. One thing you'll notice is the fans are actually sat back quite a bit from our front fan bracket. And how they've done that is they've got one of these little spacers in at the other side of the bracket. And because we've added the spacers, long fan screws are needed to secure it. So be quiet and do include four additional spacers and four additional long fan screws should you wish to add another fan to the bracket at the front. So another really cool feature we have at the top of the case is a 15 watt wireless charger. So you just need to set your phone here to charge it. And I'll show you this once we put the build together. On the top of the case, we've got a mesh panel and to remove it, we just need to simply push down here. That's then gonna free it up and then we can simply pull it up, pull it towards the front of the case to remove it. So you can see we've got some solid panels on the top of the case. To remove them, it's just a simple matter of pulling them up. And you can see on the back of them, we've got some more noise dampening material. And then the other panel just simply pulls off this way round. And again, more noise dampening material on it. So the idea behind this, if you're going for a silent focused build, obviously you can leave this in place. But if you are wanting to install fans or radiators at the top of the case, you're gonna have to remove these panels at the top. What I find certainly with an air cooler, um, you don't really get that much of a benefit by occupying the top fans. And in fact, having exhaust fans in front of the air cooler can actually hurt the performance. So I think because we are going with an air focused build and I'm not planning on installing any additional fans at the top of the case, I'm gonna leave the noise dampening panels in place. But if you are going with an AIO at the top or wanting to install fans at the top, you're most definitely gonna to have to remove them because with them in place, there's nowhere for the fans to actually blow the air. So at the top of the case, we've got a removal fan stroke radiator bracket. And again, it's just held on with four thumb screws. So with all the thumb screws loosened, we can simply lift the bracket up and away. And you'll see at the bottom of it, we've got another three port PWM fan hub. So you simply plug your fans into here. We've got these gold connectors, which make contact here. And that's what powers your fans and allows you to control the speed of them. So on this bracket, again, you're going to be able to mount up to three 140 or three 120 millimeter fans or up to a 360 millimeter radiator. On the rear of the case, we had another 140 millimeter Silence Wings 4 PWM fan pre-installed. But if you prefer, you can mount a 120 millimeter fan at the rear or either a 120 or 140 millimeter radiator. It is also possible to mount fans and radiators on the side of the case, but we're going to need to remove this panel. So there's two screws which we need to remove. And then we're going to be able to slide this panel back towards ourselves and lift it out. We can then take the fan stroke radiator bracket that comes in the case accessory box. There's no fan hub built into this one. It's just a plain metal bracket and slide it in to the side. We're just going to have to watch these cable ties here. So we'll pull the Velcro cable straps back. And then we can slide the bracket past them into place. And then it's just a simple matter of putting the two screws back into place. So that's what it looks like with the fan stroke radiator bracket on the side. And on this bracket, you're gonna be able to mount up to three 120 millimeter fans or up to a 360 millimeter radiator. It is important to point out that 140 millimeter fans or 280 millimeter radiators are not gonna fit here. So the last place we have for mounting a fan is at the bottom of the case. But for me to show you where it mounts, I'm gonna to need to remove the full length dust filter at the bottom. It is important to mention this dust filter can only be removed once you've taken the front panel off. So you can see the fan mounting location we have here down at the bottom. And there's two different screw holes indicating that you are gonna be able to mount either 120 or 140 millimeter fan here. The major disadvantage of installing the fan at the bottom is you're gonna to need to remove your hard drive cages. Although I'll show you later on, there is options to move these further up if you're not planning on installing fans or radiators on the side of the case. So remove these just a captive thumb screw in each, you need to loosen. And then we need to remove the hard drive cage bracket. There's two screws here and two at the bottom. With all four of the screws removed, we can simply tilt the bracket inwards to free it up, and then it can be removed from the case. We're then able to set up to a 140 millimeter fan into place at the bottom, set the two intake, and then it'll just be a simple matter of screwing it in with normal fan screws from the bottom. So you might be worried that your fan's not gonna do a great job down here through this solid panel, 
but this panel is replaceable. It's just a simple matter of lifting up to remove it. And then we've got this vented panel in the case accessory box, which we can simply slot into place. And you can see this looks like it should do a great job of directing airflow up towards your graphics card. So I'm not planning on adding any extra fans to the build. I will test the fan at the bottom during the case review. So I'm just going to put the standard panel back into place. In terms of motherboard support, as you'd expect in a case of this size, it is up to AATX. And if you want to go with a CPU or cooler, the maximum height supported is 190 millimeters. So if you're going with a standard ATX motherboard, this cable cover bracket is in the right place for you and it should do a good job of hiding your cables coming out to the right hand side of the motherboard. If you want to go with an EATX motherboard because it is a little bit wider, you are going to need to remove this bracket. So there's two thumb screws at the back we need to remove. And then to remove the bracket we just need to simply lift it up and it can be removed from the case. In the case accessory box we get this EATX cable cover bracket. We've got little clips here and a screw hole here and they're going to fit into here and here. So it's just a simple matter of lining it up at the back and then it's going to slot into place. And then we can screw it into place at the back with a thumb screw. So you can see here we've got additional cutouts here for an EATX motherboard and this should do a good job of hiding our cables. So if you want to go with a standard side bracket with an EATX motherboard you are also going to be able to install the cable cover. You're going to need to remove the two screws like I've already showed you from the side panel, slide it backwards, turn it round 180 degrees and then slot it back into place. So you'll notice now this has moved an extra set of cutouts over towards where the right hand side of the motherboard is going to be and we've got the same clips here we had on the fan stroke radiator bracket. So it's just a simple matter of lining it up pushing it down into place and then again we would secure this with a thumb screw. Now the other thing turning this panel round has done is it has moved these brackets where we're going to be able to install our hard drives further towards the front of the case making more space for our EATX motherboard. So for this particular build I'm just going to be installing an ATX motherboard so I'm going to put everything back to its stock configuration. So another really cool feature this case has is it is actually possible to remove the motherboard tray. There's two screws at the front and two screws at the back we need to remove. And our motherboard tray is now free. It's on rails at the side and we can simply pull it forward to remove it from the case. So one of the really cool things this is going to let you do is it's going to allow you to do most of your installation outside the case. You're going to be able to install your motherboard, potentially even your graphics card, and then slide the whole thing into the case once you're done. In terms of mounting your graphics card, at the rear of the case we've got eight horizontal PCI expansion slot brackets and you're going to be able to fit an absolutely massive graphics card in this case up to a maximum length of 495 millimeters. If you'd rather mount your graphics card in the vertical position, this bracket is rotatable. First thing we need to do is remove these five screws. So with all five of the screws removed, we're going to want to pull this bracket towards the side, which is going to free it up, and then we're going to be able to lift this bracket out. We can then slide the bracket back in to the vertical position. We can slide our second panel back into place, lining it up with the holes beneath, and then we can secure it into place with the same five screws we've just removed. Okay, so that's what it looks like with the bracket installed in the vertical position. And one of the nice things about this is you've got the whole width of the case to decide where you want to put your graphics card in. So you're going to be able to get it nicely centered away enough from your motherboard, but also away enough from the temper glass panel where hopefully you should be getting nice temperatures. So you're obviously going to need a riser cable to connect your graphics card up to your motherboard. And be quiet, do you have one as an optional extra you can pick up before this case. I don't have it so I can't show it to you here today but it is attached to the bottom of the case magnetically so you are able to pick which position you want to have it in and you've got quite a bit of freedom with it. So I'm going to be installing my graphics card in the horizontal position for this build so I'm going to go ahead and put things back to the stock configuration. So if you do decide to install your graphics card in the horizontal position you'll be pleased to see BeQuiet include a really nice GPU support bracket. There's magnets at the bottom so when you set it down it is going to stay reasonably well in place with the magnets. So in terms of supporting your graphics card, this little bracket you are able to slide up and down to a reasonable amount. Once you've got it where you want, you tighten this bottom screw to hold it in place. There's a little bit of rubber pad and this is going to sit on top of your graphics card. And then you've got this lower pad. You're going to slide it up to where it supports your graphics card and then tighten it up. And your graphics card is then going to be held between these two parts. And again, like I say, there's lots of rubber on both sides to help protect your graphics card. If you do need to slide this up slightly higher, you are going to have to remove both these thumb screws. 
So with the thumb screws at the side removed, you're going to be able to pull this bracket out. So we've got two little notches here and they're limiting where this bracket is sliding. So if you do set it down all the way at the bottom, you're going to be limited to heat between here and here. Slot it in between the two metal brackets and this is what's limiting you. If you slide it up above it, then you've got quite a bit of slide of your graphics card. And I think this is probably where we're going to need it for the graphics card I'm using. So once we've got that where we want it, it's just a matter of replacing the thumb screws. So the GPU support bracket has another really cool trick. This panel here is removable, it simply pops up. And the idea is your PCIe cables, you're going to route through here, up to your graphics card, and then you're going to slot this back into place. And then whenever you have this turned round, hopefully you're not going to be able to see any of the cables plugging into the graphics card. So we'll see how well this works later on with the 12 volt high power connector. So just before we leave the front of the case, I want to show you how to remove this shroud. Now be careful, it does have an ARGB lighting bar in it, so there is going to be a cable plugged into it. So you'll notice there's two little notches here in the case, and they're indicating where to press. So you just want to press over these notches, and the panel will slide out where you can lift it up. Now it is going to be attached at the front to the ARGB cable, so we are going to need to pull it out. And then we're going to be able to remove the shroud. So for most builds, you're not going to need to remove this. You're going to have plenty of access from the other side to be able to do the build. Reasons you might want to remove it is if you're planning to invert the case, you will need to remove it. And the other reason, if you're going to install a five and a quarter inch drive, this gives you access to it. So if you do want to install a five and a quarter inch drive, there's this bracket in the case accessory box you're going to need. And obviously you are going to need to remove the hard drives at the bottom. So you're going to want to install this way up. We've got these little notches, which are going to fit through notches in the front panel of the case. So it's just a matter of sliding it into place at the front and lining the holes of the front up with the notches on the bracket. So there we go. You can see these little notches are fitting through holes in the front of the case. And then we can secure the bracket to the case with three of the screws from the case accessory box. You're then going to be able to slide your five and a quarter inch drive in from the front. And if you take a look at the side of the bracket, there's two holes in it for securing the drive in place. If you are planning to install a five and a quarter inch drive at the bottom of the case, you're going to need to remove this bottom panel from the front fan bracket. It's held on with two screws, one at each side, and then this panel should simply just pull off, and that's then going to make you space to install your five and a quarter inch drive at the bottom. So moving to the other side of the case, and cable management looks like it should be excellent in this case. We've got full length cutouts above the motherboard, to the right of the motherboard and below the motherboard. So you should be able to get your cables out at exactly the right points and make it look really clean. Because we've also got the cable management bracket here, you shouldn't really see the cables coming through as well. Cables at the rear of the case should also look really tidy. You can see we've got these little cable covers and our case cables here have been nicely organized behind them. We've got more here, more here, and more here with plenty of cable tie down points. In the case accessory box, we get absolutely loads of Velcro cable straps. And in terms of cable routing space, this looks to be really good. Behind the motherboard, we've got two dedicated two and a half inch drive mounting brackets. They're each held on with a captive thumb screw, so we can simply slide it off. Then what you're gonna do is set your two and a half inch drive onto the bracket. If we turn it round, you can see the holes line up and you're gonna be able to screw it into place from the back before returning the bracket to the case. And that's going to keep your drive secured into place. And you can see we've got some cutouts here to run your cables down. So I've already given you a little look at our hard drive cage. At the bottom of the case, we've got two drive trays installed in the hard drive cage, held on with a thumb screw at the top. And one of the nice things about this drive cage is you are going to be able to mount your three and a half drives in it toolessly. So there's little clips here that we just need to open up. And same again on the other side. We're then going to be able to slot our three and a half inch drive into the cage. So it's just a matter of getting the drive lined up with the clip. So there it feels like it's locked into place. I'm just going to push this into place. Same thing here. Okay, so that's our drive locked into place and it's been held nicely without any tools. And then all you would simply need to do is slot the drive back into the hard drive cage. So you'll see we've also got mounting holes for two and a half inch drives. So all you would simply do is slot your two and a half inch drive into place. And you can see here the holes are lining up with the brackets. So all you need to do is simply screw it into place with the screws from the case accessory box. Now with one two and a half inch drive here, you'll notice on the other side we also have more holes. 
So you can put one in this way, and then if we pop one in the other side, so in each of these drive cages, you're going to be able to mount either one three and a half inch drive or two two and a half inch drives. So we have mentioned there may be situations where you need to remove the hard drive cage at the bottom. For example, you want to install a five and a quarter inch drive or a four hundred and twenty millimeter radiator at the front, and there is an option to move the hard drive cages up to these slots here and have them in display in the main body of the case. The other thing you could do is leave your drive cages mounted here and pick up five additional drive cages and you can actually have seven drive cages in total installed in the case. To remove these brackets you just need to simply push the little bits of plastic together and they're going to pop out of place. That's then going to allow you to slide your drive tray into place and then you can secure it with a thumb screw. And I'll show you what it looks like with one installed above as well. So that's what it looks like with the drive trays installed in the main body of the case, and I think this looks really clean. The fact that Be Quiet have coated the drive trays in black plastic, exactly the same as what you've got in the case, makes them blend in really nicely. And you can't even see that I've got a hard drive installed in here. It looks really good. So if you did have lots of storage, this case really has you covered. You can leave the two drive trays in the hard drive cage at the bottom, pick yourself up additional five of these, Be Quiet sells these as optional extras, and that is going to allow you to install up to seven three and a half inch drives or given the fact that each of those can accommodate two two and a half inch drives you're going to be able to install 14 two and a half inch drives over to the side as well as the two behind the motherboard tray meaning you can install a total of 16 two and a half inch drives in the case in the case accessory box we get this optional panel which is going to hide all your hard drives it's just a simple matter of slotting it into some notches at the bottom of the case and then pushing it in here at the top. So the power supply is going to go down at the bottom and the case is compatible with full-sized ATX power supplies up to a maximum length of 288 millimeters. And at the rear of the case we've got a removable power supply bracket. It's held on with four captive thumb screws and what we're going to be able to do is fix this to the back of our power supply and then insert the whole thing in from the back. The last thing I want to do is show you how to invert the case. Obviously if you don't want to do this, go ahead and skip to the next section, but I am including this for completeness. So you can see that I've removed all the panels I've already shown you. And the next thing for us to remove is this panel here on the middle. There's one screw at the bottom and one screw at the rear. And then we're going to be able to remove the panel. We can remove the top panel by pulling it upwards. We need to free up our wireless charger. There's four little clips here we can push out. And that's going to free the wireless charger up at the top and then we can go ahead and remove it. Next we can remove the cable from the bottom of our fan hub. It is rooted behind the case here so we're just going to free it up with the clips. And then what we're going to do is root it through the other side so we'll bring it down through here and then we're going to need to move this connector to the other side. So as well as moving it across, we're just going to spin it round and set it into place. And we'll secure it into place with the two screws. We can then plug the cable in again. And again, there's a little clip here for organising the cable. So we'll just route the cable up and into it. And then the excess cable was tucked down here. So same again. We're also going to need to change the fan hub on our top bracket. And again, as well as moving it to the other side, we're also just going to spin it round. Next, we're going to need to move all our cables over from this side to this side. So we can bring all the cables coming through this metal cutout through. And pass them down through here. Next we're going to want to bring our HD audio and USB Type-C cable through the cutout. Followed by our two USB 3.0 cables. Next we can pass our HD audio cable through the cutout. And again we're just working through the cables in order that they come out of the case. So next is going to be this USB cable. Then the other USB 3.0 cable, followed by our Type-C cable. 
We can return our wireless charger. And then we'll pass our SATA cable through the cutout. And then we can reattach the top panel. We can then return our side bracket. There's a little notch at the top for all the cables to go into. So we'll just pass the cables up and through. And again, we can secure it with the two screws. We can then slide our side bracket back into place. And we'll secure it into place at the back with the two screws. We can slide our hard drive cage bracket back into place and again secure it with the four screws. We can slot our hard drive cages into place and slide our motherboard tray back into place. And remember the motherboard tray will be going in upside down. And we can secure the motherboard tray into place. And then we can tuck all our case cables into this bracket. We can then pull the ARGB cable through from the other side. We take a look at our side panel. We'll go ahead and get it plugged into here. And you'll notice we've got one connector on this side and one connector on this side, so that's how it's going to reach. Tuck the cable in out of the way, set the panel into place, and then we'll push down here to secure the panel into place. We didn't actually need to remove our front panel to invert the case, I just had it off already, so I'm going to put it back in place. One important thing to notice about the dust filter, there is a sign on it that says top. There is an optional cable cover you can put on to cover all the cables coming from your hard drive cage. It simply slots into place here at the bottom, and then we can push it in here at the top. So if you do want to use the GP support bracket at the top, there's a bracket you're going to screw it into because obviously magnets aren't a great idea for attaching it at the top. We've got holes here and little notches here, so it's just a matter of lining them up. And once they're lined up, if we push this bracket towards the back of the case, that's going to push it into place. We can then secure it into place with two screws. Next, we're going to be able to set our graphics card bracket into place. It's going to go upside down with the graphics card sitting here. So we're not going to need this little clip here. So we can go ahead and unscrew it. And then we can set our graphics card into place in the case. And you see we're going to have a few different positions we can install this in. There are little holes here, and I can move up and down here. We can also slide the bracket over and secure it in this slot, or slide it the other way and secure it into this slot. So I'm just going to attach it to the middle slot for now. We can then replace our top fan bracket. We can clip in the optional noise dampening panels. and replace the top mesh panel. And then we can replace the other panels. So there you go, that's a quick look at what the case looks like in the inverted orientation. And the big reason for doing this is if you want to have the PC on the left hand side of your desk, you're going to be able to look in through the tempered glass panel and see your build. So we we'll take a look, you can see our motherboard tray is upside down, so your motherboard is going to be mounted upside down, as is your graphics card. And the bracket here is going to be providing support to your graphics card. And if we loosen this little thumb screw here, you can see the bracket is going to be able to slide up and down and support your GPU. We're now ready to start working on our motherboard and we're going to be installing our CPU, our CPU cutter, our M.2 SSD and our RAM before we install the motherboard in the case. To open our socket cover, we need to push this lever down and out and bring it all the way to the top of the motherboard. And then we're going to be able to open the socket cover up. We can then set our CPU down into the socket, line it up with the notches at the top and at the bottom. And I'm going to show you two different ways to install the CPU. If you don't want to use Jellid the CPU protector frame, it's just a simple matter of closing the socket cover down, applying a little bit of pressure here to get the black bit of plastic to pop off, and then closing the lever down here to secure your CPU in the socket. If you do want to use their CPU protector cover, it's still a good idea to put the CPU in the socket to protect the socket while you're doing the installation. And then you're going to want to use the enclosed Allen key to remove this mounting bracket. And then we can set the protective cover into place. We'll just set the screws into the holes. And then I'm just going to screw until it first goes slightly tight. We 
We're now ready to install our M.2 SSD and normally you would install it in this top slot. In this motherboard, this top slot is a Gen 5 slot and it shares PCIe lanes with our top PCIe slot. So if you install the drive here, it's going to half the PCIe lanes for our graphics card. Maybe worth it if you've got a Gen 5 drive. We've only got a Gen 4 drive and all the other slots are Gen 4 slots. And in fact, this bottom left hand slot actually comes from the CPU as well. So we're gonna get exactly the same advantages of installing it here, but none of the disadvantages of using the top slot. So we can remove the heatsink, which is held on with two screws. We can insert our drive into the slot, wiggling it from side to side, flatten it down. And then we've got this little latch here, which is gonna hold it in place. If you're using the motherboard from new, there'll be some plastic protection on the back like we've got here. I've already removed it from here because I've used the motherboard before. So we can replace our heatsink. Next we've got our RAM because we've got two sticks of RAM we're going to install in the second and fourth slot along from the CPU. So we can open the clips on these slots. Then we can line our RAM up with the slot. Once we're happy it's lined up, it's just some firm pressure and it's going to clip into place. The same thing with our second stick, line it up in the slot and again some firm pressure. Next we've got the LJ1700 backplate for our CPU cooler, so it's just a matter of lining it up with the holes on the back of the motherboard. And then we've got one of these spacers to screw onto each corner. I've just screwed these in by hand, but you'll notice there is actually little screw holes on the top if you want to put them on with a screwdriver instead. Then we've got one of these little brackets to go on each side. I find it slightly easier just to pop the screws through to start it off with and give them a little turn by hand and that holds the bracket in place. And then we can tighten it up with a screwdriver. Next we can add some thermal paste to the centre of the CPU. Before we install our CPU cooler, there's two important things to remember. We're going to need to remove these covers to allow us to screw the CPU cooler down. And if you're using the cooler from new, there'll be some plastic protection on the cold plate that you're going to need to remove. And last thing is, before we lower the CPU cooler down, we're going to place this little bar just underneath the cold plate. And that's what's actually going to hold it to the bracket on our motherboard. Okay, so we can go ahead and lower our CPU cooler down, line that up with the bracket beneath. Then what we're going to do is take the long screwdriver that comes with the cooler, pass it through the hole at the top and pick up the screw. And then we're going to pass the screw down through the bracket. And we're just going to get it slightly tight to start off with. And it's exactly the same process at the top. And then all we're going to do is alternate between each of the screws. So we're now ready to slide our second fan through the gap in the middle of the CPU cooler, but it's actually catching in this raised area of our first M.2 SSD heatsink, so I'm going to go ahead and remove the heatsink. So we should now be able to slide the fan through the gap in the middle. On the end of the fan we've got two holes, so we get these metal clips that come with the CPU cooler, and it's just a matter of passing these through the holes in the fans. And then we can just simply apply a little bit of pressure here. And the fan is going to clip onto the heat sink. Okay, same thing on the other side. We'll just get the metal clips through the holes in the fan. And then we just need to apply a little bit of pressure and the fan's going to clip onto the heat sink. Next, I'm just going to route our fan cables up towards the top of the motherboard. And we get this double splitter cable that comes with the CPU cooler. So we can plug each of the cables into the double splitter cable. And then we can plug the other end of the cable into our CPU fan header. And then I'm just going to tuck all this excess cable in and out of the way. And then we can replace our motherboard heatsink. So just before we secure the motherboard to the motherboard tray, there's one important thing to point out about the standoffs at the back. If we look at the middle standoff, it is different. There's no screw hole in it, and it is slightly elongated. And the idea is that it passes through the hole in the middle of the motherboard, holding your motherboard in place, allowing you to get the rest of the screws into place. So we can then set our motherboard down onto the motherboard bracket, lining it up with the standoffs beneath. 
And then we're going to use eight of the motherboard screws from the case accessory box to secure the motherboard to the motherboard tray. So although you can install your graphics card to the motherboard tray outside of the case, this doesn't seem like a good idea to me. So installing your graphics card in the case is actually a pretty easy thing to do, so you're not saving yourself an awful lot of hassle, but you're adding quite a bit of hassle because you're going to then struggle to plug in your case cables, particularly this USB 3.0 cable over to the right hand side of the motherboard. So I'm going to be installing the graphics card once we put the motherboard tray into the case. We can then slide the motherboard tray into the case, and then we're going to secure it into place with the four screws. Next thing to do is get our case cables plugged in. Our HD audio cable is going to go into this header down the bottom left hand side of the motherboard with the HD audio text facing up the way. We've got two RGB headers down at the bottom of the motherboard so we're going to plug our case's RGB cable into one of these. The PWM cable coming from the case we're going to plug into the system fan header at the bottom of the motherboard. Our front panel connectors are going to go into this header at the bottom right hand side of the motherboard and we're only going to need to use the top row working from left to right into pins 1 and 2 we've got power LED positive and power LED negative and then into pins 3 and 4 from the left hand side it's our power switch. We've got a right angle USB 3.0 header but it's actually going to struggle to plug it in with this cable cover bracket in place so I'm going to go ahead and remove the bracket. And then we can put our bracket back into place. We've got a forward facing USB 3.0 header here so we'll bring our cable through the cutout and get it plugged in. Just above that we've got our front panel type C connector so we get the cable plugged into here. So it is important not to forget to plug in our rear fan and if we want to control it with the buttons on the front of the case we're going to need to plug it into the top fan bracket. So we take a close look at the fan bracket to sense the fan speed we're going to need to plug it into the header with the RPM text on it. So that is the one closest to the front of the case so we'll get the cable plugged into it. We're now ready to start work on our power supply and our power supply is fully modular it comes out of the box without any of the cables plugged in. I've gone ahead and plugged in the cables that we're going to need. So I've plugged in our 24 pin cable for our motherboard. We've got two 8 pin EPS cables to run additional power to our CPU. And I plugged in a SATA power cable because our wireless charger and also our case's fan and ARGB controller is going to need SATA power. I've also plugged in BeQuiet's 12 volt type power adapter cable. This doesn't come out of the box with the Dark Power Pro 12. And this just means that we're going to have one cable with a 12 volt type power connector on it which is much better than using the standard PCIe cables with an adapter. So the next thing to do is fasten our power supply bracket to the back of the power supply and we're going to use four of the power supply screws that come in the case accessory box. We can then pass our power cables into the case and it is important to make sure that we install our power supply with its intake fan facing down the way where it can get cool air from the bottom of the case. And then we can secure the bracket to the back of the case with the four thumb screws. Our two 8-pin APS cables are going to get plugged into these headers at the top left hand side of the motherboard. So we'll go ahead and bring them through the cutout and get them plugged in. Our 24 pin cable is going to go into this header here but it looks actually quite difficult to plug it in with the cable cover bracket in place. So it is a good idea probably to leave this cable cover bracket off until you've actually plugged all your cables in. So I'm going to go ahead and remove it. So we can go ahead and line the cable up and get it pushed into place. Now in the box with the power supply you do get some cable combs. I haven't included them because we're actually not going to see very much of the cables once the cable cover bracket goes into place. So I'm just going to organise the cable and then we can go ahead and return the cable cover bracket. Last thing to do is get the SATA cables coming from our case plugged into the SATA cable coming from our power supply. We are now ready to install our graphics card so we're going to need to remove the second and third slot cover from the top. We're going to be installing our graphics card in the top slot and one of the nice things that Asus have done with this motherboard is there's a little button here you can press to open the clip on the socket rather than having one of these older style clips here. But if you do have one of the older style clips for your top slot, go ahead and push the button to open it up. There's no need for us to press this button. When we insert the graphics card into the slot, it will just open. So then we can go ahead and line the graphics card up with the slot. Once we're happy everything's lined up, it's just some firm pressure to the graphics card and it is going to clip into place. And then we can secure the graphics card into place with the two thumb screws. And then we can bring our 12 volt type power cable through the cutout, line it up with a graphics card, and push it into place, making sure we get a nice click as it goes into place. Next thing I've done is I've sized up my GPU support bracket. So I've got this middle bit installed between the two little bits of metal here. 
and I've got the top bit of the bracket installed up in the highest setting. So I'm just going to go ahead and remove this cable bracket at the moment. So one of the concerns with installing the GPU support bracket with the 12 volt high power adapter is you're not really meant to be bending this cable up where it plugs into the graphics card. So I'm not going to be able to push the bracket all the way in because that is obviously going to completely bend this cable. So I'm going to see if I can actually install it quite a bit out where it still supports the graphics card but doesn't bend the cable. And the idea behind this is it is meant to cover the cable. So that's it just about here, just starting to put a little bit of pressure on the cable. So what I'm going to do is just tighten the thumb screws into place in this position. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's not putting any significant bend on the cable, although the bracket is sitting out quite a bit. So we can then add the cable cover to the bracket. Okay, last thing to do is some cable management so we can get the side panel back on again. So that's the build complete and looking great. As you can see, I've gone ahead and set the PC up off camera. If you don't know how to install Windows, the drivers, set up the RGB software, enter the BIOS, update the BIOS, and adjust all the BIOS settings, I've made a separate video which covers all of that. And I'll put a link to that video in the description. In terms of controlling the fan speed on the front panel, you'll see there's a little button, one to increase and one to decrease the fan speed. If you want to sync it up with your motherboard, there's another button you press and then it will sync up your motherboard's fan curves. While this sync button is pressed, the other buttons to control the fan speed will be deactivated and you're going to have to press the sync button again to allow you to control the speed again with the buttons on the front of the case. It's a very similar story with the ARGB. There's one button to press to cycle through the mode and then there's another button to press to cycle through the colours. Again, if you want to sync up with your motherboard, you can press the sync button. I've got it set to a static white and that will then come up. And again, while that sync button is pressed, the other buttons will be deactivated. And to get back onto them again, you're going to have to press the sync button again. And one of the really nice things on this display, you're able to see what the RGB effect is currently set on the top. So what I'm planning on doing now is some thermal testing. I set out with the aim at the start of this video to make the quietest PC I've ever built and sitting right beside it, I can barely hear it. I can actually hear the two PCs in the background and not this one. So I'm pretty hopeful that I have succeeded in this. How well it performs in terms of thermals, we'll have to test that out and find out and also try a few different configurations in the case as well. So you want to hear what I've thought about this case and to find out the best way to build it in terms of aesthetics, thermals and noise, you're definitely going to want to check out that video and I'll put a link to it in the description. If you have enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up and if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.